Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. And with me tonight is Terrell Todd, one half of Todd Knife and Tool. You also know him as Zelric42 on YouTube. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on, Zelric. Well, I appreciate you guys having me again. Oh, man. Always, always a pleasure. Not only for your sparkling conversation, but also your expertise and being a knife <laughs> knife designer and uh you know a half half of Todd knife and tool. Uh tonight coming up we have some uh, new we're going to talk about some new knife drops. We're going to talk about the states of our collection and then we have some open topics of conversation like uh is this current popularity in modern knives just a trend? Are we stuck on the frame lock for high end knives and does innovation imply simplicity? Mm. I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Sorry, I just showed my hand, didn't I? So all of this That's and much, all, right. <laughs> all of this and much, much more on this edition of Thursday Night Knives. Please uh, comment and uh, give us your opinions, your questions, and such. Jim, working his magic behind the scenes, we'll put it up on screen, and we will talk about it, and it will ignite conversation like fuel in an engine. So please do that. Uh, so anyway, uh, Zell, shall we jump right in? Absolutely, let's do it. All right. So, have you seen the new artisan cutlery lock? Have you seen that? Yeah. Yes, I have. Okay. So they have this knife. It's it's uh, it's tentatively titled the eighteen twenty two. That's just the numerical designation. They haven't come up with a name yet. Uh, but it's a a new knife. It's got a a beautiful um, <clears throat> clip point blade, reminiscent of the recent Kombu knife. I, I think uh, uh, I can't remember the mm -hmm. name of that one. The Fanga, I think. Um, yeah. But this one's equipped with a with this new lock, and I'm calling it the sliding tab lock because I don't think they actually have a name for it. Um, <laughs> but it's got this, um, you know, a uh, piece on top of the blade that kind of uh, uh, straddles the back strap, and you pull it back with your thumb and your forefinger, and then I guess you push down on the blade, or the blade swings down. What do you think of this? Uh, I think it's another rendition of stuff we've seen before not saying that's a bad thing it'll all depend on how it works in the hand you know it's all these new locks they're they're interesting i like to see it mm -hmm. but uh you've kind of got to get it out there and use it to see what's going to work and what's not yeah yeah i think a good name for this is the dorsal axis lock i go with that sure <laughs> i don't i don't think uh, benchmade will go for that but it it is uh you know I, it looks fidget friendly if you can pull that back and actually have it drop down uh right now on this prototype and we're not saying this is what the what the final piece is going to be but on this prototype it looks like it might be a little cumbersome uh definitely on the eyes but also in the pocket it looks like it bulges a little bit uh west and east for my taste but uh, uh overall uh, a nice looking knife in my opinion yeah, I'd agree. I, I do think that they've got some some smoothing out to do and getting it to uh, a better look. Because right now, yeah, it's a little rough, but they'll get there. Yeah, the blade is a win for sure, and actually, the the um, uh, the silhouette of the handle is nice. You know. Yeah, you know. yeah it is. Yeah. Well, we'll 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 see what happens. Uh, an, another innovation, and and we're going to talk about the the term innovation a little bit later. But another innovation uh, that's kind of uh, stuck out to me is Reich's new uh, G10 Integral Flipper. Have you seen that one? I have. I've considered this before, and I have some reservations about it. Why? G10 is a great material. But to have G10 hard enough to support a knife, now you have G10 that's chippy, prone to breaking. Uh, it's, I maybe they've done some kind of something to it in the resin they're using that's going to make it great. I don't know. So but are you saying G10 is brittle? In it your can experience? be, yes. Okay. Yeah, I you can get G10 in dozens and dozens of hardness levels from almost floppy to super hard mm -hmm. and uh to have the ability to mill it out like they're doing and putting bearings and you know all the metal inside it uh it's gonna have to be a reasonably hard one but you know maybe they've done something with the resin because that's the key right there if they've got a great resin for it it may be awesome 
Right. Yeah. I, I, I feel like this knife, uh, it, it looks beautiful. Um, I, I, I even like the detail of the sort of commander 1911, uh, hammer thing on the, on the flipper tab. Um, <laughs> I think the blade shape is nice. The handle looks nice. I, I cannot stand the clip. I, I don't like that kind of clip. I love spring clips, uh, but something about that with the holes, all the holes cut out and everything, it just looks cheap to me. But in general, I mean, I know that Reich knife is a, is a, is a serious operation. Um, and it, it just made me wonder, why did no one ever try an integral G10 handle before now? Uh, my guess would be it's the it's either... You know, you have to do something special with the resins and with the G10 itself to get something that's viable to do it with. That that would be my guess. And like I said, maybe they've got it right. And as far as the clip goes, I'm kind of with you, especially if that's a stainless clip. Man, those things bend and they're a pain. Yeah, and 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 I don't think it uh, I don't think it matches the design of the rest of the knife. I don't mean necessarily in terms of aesthetic, but in terms of attention, it looks like so much attention went into the rest of the knife and, and the clip was just sort of an afterthought, which I never like. Hey, spirited whiskey. <laughs> Woo. Waiting all week. I love it. Yep. <laughs> all right. You, and I kind of agree with you. I, I don't think it matches the knife real well. Uh, and Knowing the guys over at Reich, that kind of surprises me. They usually do a great job with aesthetics. Well, okay. That being said, I think this is still in um, in in prototype format, so that might just be that might just be something they threw on there before they took the picture. But I can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, you talk about their their aesthetics. I mean, their knives with, with all the sort of um, biological. I don't know what to call it. Uh, um, biomechanical biomechanical thank you like like uh giger stuff you know mm -hmm. like like those their knives are, are incredibly crafted so right so i imagine that this knife will be will be something too i don't have any right knives never held anyone hello sir welcome hey how you doing hey jim will you bring up uh spirited whiskey's second thank you speaking of integrals i think giant mouse did a really bang up job with their new gm6 gmp6 Sold out quickly, but my hands are not. All right. Oh, Riot. Oh, Riot made this. Okay, so I don't know anything about this. Uh, Taro? Uh, I've seen pictures, and that's it. I haven't had a chance to actually look at one. So it looks cool. That's about all I can say. <laughs> what, are your, what are your feelings on integrals in general? I don't have one, and I've never actually lusted after one, uh, though I think, I think I feel that feeling rising up with the, with the, uh, with the XL Laconico um, a Monterey Bay knife that just came out. I can't remember what, what it's called, but that's an integral. And, and, and I'm, I like that knife a lot and, and I liked it a lot before I knew it was integral. And I kind of like how it is integral. It's kind of only towards the back, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost as, as if it has a small back spacer. How, how, what do you feel about integrals in general? Uh, I think it's a great way to put together a knife as long as you're willing to put up with it, you got, you're going to have more weight doing an integral almost every time. Okay. Uh, but it can be designed great. We 702, even though it had kind of not the greatest blade in it, that was a wonderful gentleman's knife. And uh, even better than the one that came later that they made and one that uh, Best Tech made that, were, that was better uh, as a gentleman's knife, simply because it was all together and really solid. And uh, just felt good, but it was heavy. And okay, so heavy because you have to leave a little bit more of that material there to to make it rigid, and you know. Whereas when you when you're screwing things together, you can. Uh, that's about where I where I end <laughs> with my. Well, what it comes down to, and the reason I mention Wee Knife is because they have an integral pivot system that they've designed that I have yet, and there may be somebody out there that's done it, but. I haven't yet seen anyone match. Uh, the Riot integrals don't match it. They've got a more complicated setup. Hmm. Or not really more complicated, but more cumbersome setup. And that's what I've seen with most integrals is a more cumbersome setup than what Wii's doing. And so, uh, Well, what are what are the challenges of um, setting up the pivot or, or setting up the entire knife in an integral? Uh, the main challenge is getting the pivot to work. You have to have a stop pin. 
you have to have uh, you get the bearings in there. And uh, Wii's setup is they've got uh, bear they bore everything out, leave a spot for backing washer, bearing, pivot, uh, barrel, and the screws on either side. But they, then they have this tab, you could call it, that sets in and goes over the stop pin and gets screwed down by your pivot screw. Okay. Holding everything together. And the thing there is they patented the design. <laughs> so okay. they've kind of taken that one for a while, I guess. So have you ever actually worked on one of those? Is it, is it, um, is it, is it owner friendly for maintenance? Enough. It's, okay. it's not the easiest one to work on, but once you've had one apart a couple of times, they're simple you get enough. The idea. Yeah. I always wondered how you, you know, um, Hey Matthew, nice to have hey, you. Here. Doing? It's finally Thursday. Ah, it's not amateur night. It's Thursday night. Uh, so uh, it, we may be amateurs. <laughs> I meant in terms of like going out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, no. But uh, I always wondered how you actually service an integral. Like how do you, you know, and I, I, I understand you have to, you have to undo the pivot, pull it out and then slip everything out. But it, it just seems like a precarious affair. Like you might get it apart and then have to send it back. Uh, no, it's not that bad. It's okay. at least on the Wii models and, uh, the Riot models aren't that bad either. I've had some of them apart, and I've even had a couple of Marfions apart, and they're oh. not. None of them are terribly complicated. Uh, it's just a different arrangement of parts, same stuff, just arranged differently. And a different sequence of putting it right. together and all that. Lion Steel did an integral G10. Is that true? I mean, I'm not. Mm. I'm not doubting you. Oh, the TM TM1. Uh, I haven't seen that one. I, I don't think I have. Uh, Ooh, that's good. That's good because, um, you know, there's a there's a claim that the Reich knife one is the new one. It's the first one. So uh, if we could get a good controversy out of this, that'd be fantastic. Uh, of course, I'm joking. But uh, oh, I'm seeing my Carta handle. Oh, my Carta. By the way, the Roxy 4 is a beautiful piece of badassery. And I have it not three feet away from me. In my case, right now I have my malware, which is also a, an incredible piece <laughs> of badassery. I love this knife. I love it. And thank you, Big Boar Knife and Gear. And yeah, we have a Roxy 4 right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, that has the flame anodization on it, doesn't it? Yep, it's oh, the flame anno model. That's awesome. Such a great knife, man. I love that knife. Congratulations. <laughs> thank on you. A fabulous design. Uh, oh, we appreciate it. <laughs> So I want to talk about two other uh, knife things coming out. Uh, one of them, I, I guess Jim probably doesn't know I want to talk about, but Almar knives. You know Almar knives, right? Uh, Absolutely. Classic tactical knives. Um, but, you know, they, they kind of, I, I feel like they fell a little bit behind the times there. Um, mm -hmm. but, but their classics are still classics. They're coming out with some revamped versions of their classics. And I, I feel like they're kind of missing the mark if the idea is to come back strong and to come back contemporary uh they're they're coming back with the sear model you know the sear model that's kind of their um, yeah that's kind of their uh, bread and butter uh tactical they're coming back with that with with a flipper tab that looks like it, it fell off a four-story building and landed on the knife and <laughs> and and it's got a um it's it, it's it's what do you call it spring assisted and to me, like that has run its course. Uh, you could just look at, at at Kershaw, whose bread and butter for years was that stuff, and they're doing away with it slowly but surely. Um, so I feel like Almar is missing the mark here, and it's a classic. You know, it's a it's a legacy brand, and I don't want to see that happen. So I I hope as time goes on, you know, that now they're moving up to G uh, to D two. It's it kind of just seems a little behind the times to me. Yeah, uh, I, I'm looking kind of here, and Jim has put it up on screen for us. That's nice. Uh, I, you know, all these older knife companies, I, I really wish that they would try, and, and they're trying here, mm -hmm. to bridge that gap to the modern knife. Uh, Case Knife Company has done a little bit of this. I wish they would do more. Yep. Their problem, Case's problem, is that they upset the people older than us 
whenever they come out with a flipper knife or whatever. Yeah. And, and they've got to live with their, uh, uh, audience. Yeah. Don't and, worry, guys. They're still going to come out with 8 million trappers a year. Don't worry about it. Let them do the flipper knives and don't get upset. Yeah, but they don't. They get upset. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've had conversations with people about this because uh, one of the, I forget which one, but there's one of the traditional knife companies that was going under. And one of the things I said was they never tried to bridge the gap. They never tried to get me to buy one of their knives. Right. And, I would have been happy to buy one of their knives with the craftsmanship that they had. Like Queen, I think, yeah. Yeah, Queen Cutlery, yeah. But it's in something that I want. Yeah. And, they- and, 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 and I don't think that necessarily means uh, titanium frame lock flipper either. I mean, I, I, I think that you can, like with the Almar, get, get rid of that stupid flipper tab, get rid of the spring in there, and just update the classic itself. It's a classic. It's a cool ass knife. And if you, if you, all you have to do is update the blade steel, basically. That, I mean, that's it. It's already and, there. The materials are already there. The design is already there. That doesn't need an update. If you want to make a flipper, design a new flipper. I absolutely agree with you. And that's what I would say with uh, case knives. Don't make me something that's not your knife. Make me a case knife that has thumb studs or a flipper tab, or maybe it's on bearings. Uh, and so, give me that crazy blue Kiranite handle. Yes, right. So wait, did you take exception to Case working with um, uh, a Southern, Southern Grind? Grind? Yeah. No, go for it. Yeah, that knife was cool, man. Yeah. And they came out with a new version of their of their classic Mako. Mm-hmm. And and you know it's a it's a great effort. I, to me, it's not as cool as the as the collab with the with Southern Grind. But yes, I, I'm agreeing with you. Like bridging that gap, Peter Rosenti, Tanto Snafu. Uh, yes, I need that too. Nice to have you, Edwin. I've been digging your videos, uh, Cal O P R, uh, on YouTube and on Instagram. He's been putting up all of his. He's got a, an incredible uh, collection, but. Uh, uh, what I know him for is his collection of custom Emersons, and they've been going up there. <laughs> so, yeah, check out his videos. They're awesome. Matthew Lee, what a lot of these. Old- Absolutely, Matthew. Pocket clips on some of these older knives. Uh, Almar is guilty of that, and Case is guilty of that, and a lot of them are. They have these big old knives and no pocket clip. They expect you to get a holster or something. Yeah, yeah. Them. Yeah, and actually... Uh, one thing that Almar uh, knives I forgot to mention is doing that I really like is they're bringing back their honey jig boned folders. They have a, a like a two and a half inch, uh, a three and a quarter inch, and a four inch uh, lock back folder with a. They kind of look like the the eagle and the and the falcon. Yeah. familiar with those, but they've got the honey jig bone in the in the back lock. Those are sweet, I think, and I don't need a I don't need a clip on those, you know. Though actually on the four inch one, it'd be nice, but right. uh, those, okay. I think keep those going, update, update the classics with new materials, but keep them the, the classics and come up with some new designs. Well, yeah. And that's, that's what I've said for quite some time now. Don't <laughs> yeah. doing. Agreed, no. big boy. <laughs> right. And it's still it, a thing. Yeah. Do what you do, but give us something new, but still what you do. Right. And uh, yeah, the assisted thing now, now that the Asian manufacturers can manufacture things to closer tolerances, not that they couldn't in the past 10 years, but it's become a necessity now right. and it's a lot cheaper now. But now that it's accessible, give up on the assisted knives. I mean, Kershaw can't completely because they're going to have a certain amount of their uh, their fans that are going to yep. want an assisted. Yep. yep but they can slow down on it. Yes, and they are. And especially Kershaw, come come to come to think of it, just due to their sort of proliferation throughout the 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 ordinary retail stores. You know, I live in a very uh weapon unfriendly area, but I can still go to Walmart or Dick's Sporting Goods and find, you know, any number of Kershaws with assisted opening. Uh, right. Hey Bob, you still love the REK? Oh. <laughs> uh um uh Excuse me? Yes, I am. Tell us a story of what you what what do you say? 
<laughs> what I've used it for. All right. Uh, okay. So my suburban dad test, I'm the short order cook of the house. All right. You know, my wife makes all the fancy meals on the weekends, but throughout the week, I'm the one who keeps the family fed. And this thing, okay, you know that thin plastic, very thin plastic that they put on uh, beef? This cuts it and makes the corners no problem. So there you go. That's what I've used it for so far. That and menacing opponents, you know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because that hollow ground, it looks like a straight razor. People run in fear, you know. Well, yeah, I get that. <laughs> Do they still make the CQC 13? I did not see for sale a little while ago. Uh, yeah, I have a I have a 13, but uh, um, they seem to rotate through what they're making. Uh, so uh, at any given time, they might not be making that. They might not be available. And um, yeah, that's my favorite of their Bowie blades, and they have a lot of them for sure. Yeah. And uh, Big Boar, I am not probing you, buddy. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you got to read it there, Bob. <laughs> the Dino somewhere. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. He's not, and I he's swear. absolutely right about the, if the detent is set up right, that the knife works just like an assisted. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and so let me ask you this. If the detent is set up right, how much of it relies on having bearings? I mean, because I have some very, very smooth uh, um, uh, phosphor bronze or this, which is on, uh, you know, Teflon. How and, much of it depends on the detent? Oh, on any of them, a huge amount of it depends on the detent, even with bearings. Detent and flipper tab placement. Uh, detent has got to be reasonable. Flipper tab placement is paramount. It's got to be on point. Okay, so I, I understand how you would... Um, account for flipper tab design and how you would learn like, oh, you want it directly above or slightly in front of the pivot or whatever it is, you could design for that. But, excuse me, uh, I don't understand how you can account for the detent. How do you set detent or, or like, does that have to do with the, uh, the, the tension on the bar? Uh, one or is setting that silly little ball in the handle or in the you know, locked lock bar insert or in the lock bar and how deep you put it in there. Okay. That's the first thing. And then from there, yes, it's where it sits on that bar and how much tension is on the bar. Have you used, have you ever, um, do you have a sharp by design? Uh, I do not have one, but I have. Okay. Hey knife dude. Welcome. Thanks for mm -hmm. showing up. So, okay. So what do you think of that? Uh, so you have used a sharp by design, you've actuated one. What do you think of that detent system? Uh, you know, I didn't have one long enough to get intimate with it and okay. really know what it was, what was going on. It was a kind of a pass through knife that went to somebody else. Got you. I know that uh, Brian Nadeau uh, kind of sculpts the, instead of inserting a detent ball into a hole in the spring bar, he mills away everything that's not the detent nub or whatever it is and is left with a one solid piece and i was just curious uh how that works hey Stop. what's going on Welcome, sir how you doing man good to have you <coughs> excuse me love your videos washers or bearings the detent and tab placement is everything i i, I that's what zell is saying and that's what i have come to know just intuitively like because i've, I've got some really you know, I'm starting to feel even this SMF you sent me. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's on phosphor bronze, and it's actually it's 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 very smooth. It's not false shut or anything like that, but it doesn't need to be. That's just a great knife. I can't stop talking about it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it aside and say, have you seen the? Uh, the have we talked about the kickstart in the new Shirogorovs? Uh, no. Okay, and so I I have not seen that. But I read enough to understand what they're doing. All right. Well, okay. So interesting, right? You take you take Lee Williams and Shira Gorov, put them together. You get the one ten, their one ten, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, with the with the um, kickstart flipper. What do you think of that flipper? 
Uh, I think on a knife like that, that it's a novel way to open the knife uh, and that it's not anything I would put on a knife that I would use every day. I think that it is a, uh, I, I applaud the innovation, or uh, I should say, I applaud the mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an interesting and, and unique and um, a difficult thing to create and to, and to produce. But I wonder why. Uh, to be different. Okay. In All right. this, and case, in this it, case, they're going to tell you it's to clean up the knife. Because it's a Shigorov. When it's open, so you don't have to right. see that un unsightly flipper tab. Right. Okay. But it, the big thing is to be unique and different and have something that nobody else has got. And and believe you me, I am all for that. I, uh, you know, that's why I keep my ZT055 because it's a, ch you know, Gus Ciccini design and it's unique and interesting. And, um, you know, I, I do like that. But man, when you're in the rarefied era of a Shirogorov, that's a lot of money um, for a. For, I mean, it's a cool looking knife, but to me, it's it doesn't look as good as uh, like um, what is it, the ninety five? Uh, I I lose track of what yeah, they call alders. I, I do too. But but the big, beautiful, simple, you know, micarta inlay Shiro, uh, I, I think is beautiful. This one I think is starting to get a little busy with the. Well, whatever. I'll, I'll, I love the kick stop mechanism. It's been 100% reliable in daily use for me on my Wingman EDC. I do not like it on the Shergarov because it doesn't change the lines enough. Interesting. That's the aesthetic argument. And, and, and Zell, you're saying that is probably the argument under which they, they undertook this in the first place. Well, if you ask them, I'm sure that's what they'd say. It was to keep the knife to lo looking clean. Yeah. And, you know, I'm all for that if if that's what you're doing. Yeah. Because, yeah, the knife does look clean. I'm not sure I like all the little kind of dimples they've got all over it. But Yeah, yeah. That that kind of uncleans it up a little bit, but anyway, I mean, I, I don't mean to uh, I don't mean to cast aspersions on two fantastic knife entities. It's just this one to me, like, eh. There is one Shirogorov out there that I really want, and uh, Alex has it, or and a number of other people have it. Uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny has one. It's just got that simple micarta inlay, green, <laughs> four inch blade, beautiful, simple. Yeah, well, I don't even know what the one number on the one is I want. It's just the four inch blade, plain titanium. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I think we want the same one. The, si the absolutely simple Shigorov. So I'll buy two and I'll send one to you. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Great. <laughs> looks, like, looks like a ton of inverted nipples all over the knife. Yeah, I, I cannot disagree with you. Cannot disagree. Yeah. With you. It's a little bit too much. Um, I uh, two two design flourishes max. Alex has every, <laughs> everything Russian custom. That's true. He's got a, a, a an incredible collection here. So, um, have you gotten anything new? Zell recently mm, a Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. <gasps> How does it cut? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's it'll, sweet. It'll cut through just about anything you pointed at. That sounds sweet. You're a Jeeper. <laughs> Are you a Jeep? Do you like to go off road with that? Uh, not hardcore off road, but yeah, I do like to go out and play in it. Well, sir, congratulations on your, on your purchase. I'm sure Thank you. <laughs> I, I want something. Well, I, I'm not going to say anything cause I don't want my, car to over here and start screwing me over like all other technology has today. <laughs> um, but I, I have ordered a new knife. Oh my gosh. What? And it's a, uh, it's a cold steel. What? Yes. A no, cold steel. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got the new XL tie light with the crisp blade in 440 C. Oh geez. <laughs> oh geez. What's oh geez. What, what are you going to use that thing for, man? The same thing I use all my other gigantic cold steels for. To, to open the beef package? <laughs> to, show up, <laughs> to open up some, some ground beef. No, no, no. no, no, no. So, so in the future, you know, uh, in, the, in the dystopian future, I will either use it to trade for food or I will use it as a showcase weapon when I'm pit fighting, you know, for survival. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. As long as we got to use for it, right? it's all good. <laughs> got to have a plan. So yeah, I'm very excited for that. And you know, the funny thing is, is my brother who, um, 
who is an enabler. He calls himself a knife enabler. Uh, he likes guns and I'm a gun enabler. I will point out holes in his collection just when he thinks he's got everything he needs. And he's like, oh, you're right. I don't have a polymer subcompact blah, 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 and then I'll have to go out and buy one. Well, we do that. He does the same thing to me with knives. <laughs> and uh, he, he texted me uh, a, 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 an ad from cold steel. And he's like, they're going fast, Bob. They only made 2000 of them, Bob. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, all right. And I bought it. So that's it. We, we egg each other on Chris blade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. I, I, well, you know, I have a Chris, right up here on the wall. I'm a sucker for the, for the Indonesian and Filipino blades. And, and the Chris I always thought was um, just for decoration, but actually it's devastating. It's like a giant serrated bread knife. Yeah. I love cold steel too, man. I, I can't, I can't quit you cold steel. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, so, well, when I get it, I'll show it off and everyone's going to be totally, totally jealous of me. Uh, <laughs> so actually, I, I have I have something. Um, I, I, I have a knife I want to sell. And I don't know if this is crass, but I'm just going to say, if anyone wants a beautiful and in fantastic condition, we 609 in purple practically just chop my thumb off. Please and let that me. thing will. It, that action on those is so smooth oh my and God. and the you know that big one cliff blade so i have good. one of those over there that no i'm not going to sell <sighs> i think I, mine's I, green though green yeah you know I, I i i love purple as a color um i just i i never carry this and now i'm starting to think it's because of this damn knife i'm like i now i gotta like so this is making me feel like i i need to double double back down on my um my american classics i've always wanted a chris reeve sabenza tanto you know i've always wanted a uh, an sm a sng tanto and there are other classic knives that yeah how badly do you need an sng how bad oh geez man um <laughs> god you got to do this to me right here right now no we can talk about it later i need it badly okay <laughs> <laughs> call me later <laughs> okay <laughs> so anyway uh i wanted to i wanted to bring up uh a couple of open topic uh open topics for conversation because these things i keep using the word innovation uh, uh awesome uh <laughs> awesome. thanks knife dude yeah i read that and i said awesome i, I was trying to say often but oftentimes <laughs> um in in uh in my interviews with people, we, we talk about innovation and, and then when I'll, I'll do a knife review or talk about a knife, I, I love innovative knives, but it, it led me to wonder tonight, shouldn't innovation, if something is innovative, that means it's pushing something forward. It's not just different and novel, but it's pushing something forward. And at least in the way I define innovation. So should the term innovation imply a simpler way of doing things, a better mousetrap, not just a different mousetrap, but a better mousetrap. Hmm. That, that's kind of a tough one. Uh, I look at innovation as getting out there and trying something. You know, if you've got something new, let's throw it out there. Let's see it, throw it against the wall, see if it sticks. Uh, especially if it's a, what you think is a better way. You know, like all, he's got the lock thing up there. We've got how many new locks now? Some of them are good. Some of them not so good. Some of them are going to stick around. Some of them may not. With the Axis lock, uh, or I forget what bench made it's actually called. That's the trademark. Mm -hmm. But uh, with that trade or with that patent going away, we're going to see a lot more of the stuff like Artisan Cutlery is doing. All right because they're not going to be afraid of infringing on the patent. And uh, we did one last year. Artisan Cutlery's doing one. Uh, Hogue has done a number Hogue, of them straight Hogue up. has done them uh, even in cooperation with Drop. It, the one was done. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing what people can do there and getting away from those Omega Springs and using something else. But there's going to be a lot of stuff in it. 
if it sticks to the wall, then yeah, we keep it around. If it doesn't, well, you know, that's how it works. Yeah. Well, I, I, it seems like in holding knives anyway, innovation comes oftentimes in locks, as you mentioned. Um, this year, we've seen this new artisan cutlery lock. We have we saw the ant lock last year, mm -hmm. the ant, ant lock from um, uh, Real um, Steel Will. I always get those two mixed up, Real Steel and Steel Will. Right. Uh, we saw the Scorpion lock. You know, that's been around for a while, but that, that hit the mainstream with, uh, with the AD-15 uh out by cold steel um uh deadbolt also showed up deadbolt that's right that's a cool yeah. one i i, I haven't uh, I, yeah I, yet. I would like to see that moved away from crkt to somebody that will do something cool with it <laughs> tell me how you really feel so no, no I, I don't ever hold back on this <laughs> stuff man no i i kind of agree with you there or i mean i i've I've always felt like CRKT has so many cool designs, but they just kind of refuse to uh, make them appealing to people who want to spend a lot of money. And then they come out with a shock and ask 750 bucks for it. It's like, whoa, slow your roll there, man. You got to work up to that. Innovation can be, Edwin says, innovation can be improving a process as well, like using a 3D printer to create a prototype. And, and, and what's interesting, Edwin, is, yeah, we we kind of got into that about a year ago and some people had been doing it but because we're a bit more prolific yeah i can't think of the word we're we're out there more uh others have started doing that as well prototyping their stuff on 3d printers mm -hmm. and you know it's another process you have to learn but it can speed up the process it seems like it can it can really I mean, it's like a, 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 a an old master painter who has to make a painting that's 20 feet by 12 feet. You know, he doesn't just uh, attack the canvas. He does a bunch of different drawings and susses it out on the small scale. So he doesn't m mess up the, you know, mangle the process in the end. Axis, able, two button, pull down. It's all the same poop. <laughs> yeah, and he's right. Now, one yeah. thing we did miss, and uh, it was kind of a, to me, it was a letdown of a knife but was Medford Knife and Tools Smooth Criminal, mm. they have a button lock. Okay, everybody's got a button lock, but if you've messed with a Smooth Criminal, it doesn't have any blade play in it. It really? locks up solid. So Greg and his team have made a knife that is just, I don't, I, I haven't taken it apart yet. You know how Greg feels about that, and I don't want the black helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Well, I got to say, uh, I, I did have a Hogue... Um, EXO3, um, Alishowitz designed, uh, actually that was kind of a, a, a GRN integral, if you will, if I'm, if I'm remembering it correctly, but that was a button lock that, that also had no play. If I remember correctly, that was a pretty damn solid knife. Um, but I, the button lock in general, are you a fan or not? Uh, if people do it like Greg did, absolutely. It's a great, simple lock system. It's just really hard to do it and not have any blade play. Have you ever experienced a ProTech, uh, like a Mordax or a, what was their other yes. one? Okay. Does, I have not. How do they those? Have, they have a little bit in them. Okay. Every, every button lock I've ever messed with until the Smooth Criminal showed up had a little bit of blade play. And Greg swore up and down to me it wouldn't have any, and I told him he was a liar, and, well, <laughs> he was right. Nice. Wow. Do you know how he did it? Just, just. Just, I, I, like I said, I don't want the black helicopters coming to my house. He just did his homework and paid attention. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Go I love Hogue too. Uh, can you can you go back to the last one? Uh, don't you dare talk smack. Never mind. The smooth criminal is meant. Oh, he's not talking smack. He's saying the smooth criminal is super sweet. I mean, am I right? That's what you're saying. Uh, it, it's got some what I would call issues, okay. but yeah, overall, it's a very good night. Uh, it's, you know, that whole flipper tab placement thing that I talk about way too much. Yep. It's got a little bit of that. Oh, okay. All right. I know they have an automatic version of that, right? Now, an automatic, that would be sweet. That would be really sweet. Yeah. And that's one thing. I know we're off subject, but the, oh, oh the, uh, what is Medford's regular knife? The Praetorian? Yeah. That automatic Praetorian? I'm not an outside automatic guy. Yeah. <laughs> I want one of those. 
Oh my god, I didn't I wasn't even aware they were making one. Yeah. I, I, I want a Praetorian just in general. I just I, I think that's one I need to and that's that's kind of uh that's that's kind of in line with this and this, the American classics, you know, and and you know, I, I'm kind of going back to my roots here, or the roots. They're not my roots, but they're the roots. Um, and and I, I feel like um I feel like Medford is is a part of that group. <laughs> you uh, uh, yeah. do you agree? Oh yeah, Medford definitely is. The Praetorian has become a classic. Uh I have a Praetorian Genesis and a Praetorian Micro. Genesis is the midline uh, the midsize? Yeah. Be careful about ordering a full size Praetorian. Be sure you understand how big that thing is. <laughs> I know. I'm not going to be wearing my skinny jeans with that, huh? You know, I had one of those for a little while, uh, and I ended up selling it because, wow, <laughs> that is a big knife. All right. All right. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes I kind of feel like when you when you spend a lot of money on a knife, you kind of want to be able to carry it all the time, you know, so that you feel like you're getting the bang for your buck six months in now and i'm still waiting you'll get it you'll get it be patient sir thanks yeah, Dave. greg always gets things out it takes oh, a while i had a uh i he came on the knife junkie podcast a while back i don't remember the episode number but what a cool guy man he he's he, man he's an interesting dude and and uh really uh He's the kind of guy who just makes you feel lazy as, as hell when you see him, you know, because he's like, I decided I'd start an awesome knife company. So I went out and bought a factory and started an awesome knife company. You know, it's like, boom. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. And Greg's a lot deeper than most people think. I mean, he's a well, really, really good guy. Oh, I know. I mean, we talked for about an hour and and he opened up. As a matter of fact, at one point in the interview, he's like, I, I don't know what was going on around him. But he like picked up the laptop and walked into a dark den. It's like, okay, now let's talk. I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. That sounds very Greg. <laughs> yeah, he, cool cat. He seems unflappable. Uh, so uh, let me ask you. This is just a, a, a palate cleansing question, and okay. and maybe 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 a little too much for that. But what is the obsession that we all have with this first tool? It's the first tool we ever came up with, and we're still obsessed about it. We, you know, we've come up with all these other things in the meantime. We have a couple other tools we obsess about cars, you know, airplanes and computers and other cool shit. But really the knife, why is it? Because it is the simplest thing possible. Yet it has so many possibilities in it. You know, we, we look at like, I've got my SMF right here. All kinds of engineering went into that. And I do think that we have some political stuff that makes the knife more appealing, just like firearms. Whenever we have people telling us we shouldn't do it, what do we want to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I happen to live in a state that is very, very knife prohibitive. And, and it's odd because it's Virginia. And I'm like, really? Ar aren't we supposed to be? We, you know, I, I didn't grow up here, uh, but I, but I'm a Virginian now and I'm thinking it's kind of crazy that we have prohibitive knife laws. I think part of our heritage should include the right to, you know, I, I have a tiny, I have one of those little launch nines on mm -hmm. my, on my keychain. It's the sweetest little knife in the world, but that would put me in prison. If, if I were ever, you know, busted by the cops, they took my keys and opened it up and didn't like me. Right. You know, to me, that's just crazy. Yeah, well, I don't have to worry about that much here in the Midwest, but, you know, I'm in Missouri, so they really don't care. <laughs> I, we technically have a four inch and under law. Oh, that's, that's nice. It's not even a three about it. and under. Well, you know, they're way ahead out in Missouri. That's what I keep hearing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have another question for you. Or, or something I've been thinking about, and that is the frame lock in general. You know, we've been talking about locks. We've right. been talking about inno innovation. Are we stuck on the frame lock <coughs> because of its um, legacy? Are we stuck on the frame lock because of of the inherent quality that it or stability and quality that it implies? And I'm talking about in high high end knives. Skywarp forty one. Nice to see you again, sir. Uh. 
No, we're stuck on the frame lock because of the design simplicity. You take a piece of titanium or a, ste a certain steels, uh, you, with the steel, you heat treat it, temper it back, you have a spring. Titanium, you don't have to do anything. You just have to mill it properly and you have a spring. And it makes for a, I don't want to say easy, but a simpler way to do things to give you a cleaner design and lets you do the design instead of having to worry about all the mechanical bits. Jeez. Okay. Boom. Shut that down. Well, <laughs> That, that, that is, that is, uh, I don't know that. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear because I was starting to feel like, why, you know, what is this? It's everything is a frame lock, but yes, that makes total sense. Dur, it, it requires fewer parts, less manufacturing and, and a little bit of knowledge up front, uh, per model. I know each model is different. And then, and then once you figure out, you know, how much to mill out here or what degree to bend it or whatever it is, you got it. You don't have all these other parts you have to put inside. Yeah. And that's as simple as it gets. I mean, some of the other stuff's cool. Hmm. I would love, there's some lock designs in my head that I would love to do, but they get complicated. And why the knife lock is a safety mechanism for you. It's not to make it a fixed blade. It's to make it so that the knife doesn't fold up on you if you accidentally hit something going backwards. And uh, that's really all it's there for. Reeve integral lock. Okay. Okay. But, sorry. <laughs> the, Mr. Reeve was never hardcore about people using it. So all is good. <laughs> um, and we can make all these super hardcore locks like you know, what cold steel does, the deadbolt lock, some of this, uh, the buck marksman, that thing has got a serious lock on it. Really? Yeah. Uh, get the yeah, eye to look at one of those. It's, uh, I mean, I love the way they look and I've never had one, but, uh, they look fun. I, I, oh, I hate they are about it, but yeah, they look fun. But so that you're saying that that tab coming up through that back strap is a really strong. Oh yeah. It's a super strong lock. But all of those are more complicated and harder to use, e either more complicated or harder to use than a simple frame lock. And the, and the frame lock is pretty damn strong, especially if you're holding it in your hand, which you will be if, if you need it to be strong, right? Because you're reinforcing right. it with your grip. Right. And you have to get over the fact that the lock isn't there to make it a fixed blade. Right. Right. Hey, Jim, will you go back to, I think it was Spirited Whiskey. He was talking about automatic knives. I'm curious what he was talking about. Nicely done, sir. <laughs> Thank you. In Illinois, you have to have your fire out. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> I thought that's, I assumed, I didn't think, I assumed that that was the case in my state, Virginia. Like, oh, well, you know, if I have my concealed carry i can carry any i can carry a, a a sword under my coat you know because i've got this that's not the case here it's weird it, it it has nothing to do with knives it's strictly firearms here right yes the lock is so you don't cut off your fingers exactly it, and and yeah. it's presumably you're not doing anything uh, uh you know out, out, out of the uh, outside the pail for a folding knife you don't have to worry about it you know, um, Spir Spirited Whiskey makes a good point here, although I've talked to a lot of makers about the way they do the different locks. And if uh, if you Goody Van Poppel is one, he doesn't put big relief cuts in his knives if there's any relief cut at all. And he will tell you that it's so that you have nearly a fixed blade. Wait, when you're saying relief cut, are you talking about the, the area that? Yeah, that spot right there, there's about 40 thousandths. Is he the guy, uh, is Goody Van Poppel the one who does like four or five small incisions or small lines? He either does a very, very shallow one or none. Oh my gosh. He just, he just muscles that bar over. Right. And you know, that's his design decision. So inside or outside, you know, obviously you think outside cause you have it here, but uh, not always. Uh, oh no, no, on this one, it's. 
Well, I guess that one is outside. I was thinking that one was inside. I guess all the ones that are currently in production are outside, but okay. it doesn't matter Well, as far as mechanically. Okay. It, it does matter in terms of extraction. I have a few few pairs of pants. Uh, yes. You know, and this is not even egregious. Like this, you know, usually this is a problem when this bend in the clip is further back, kind of in the well of that. Uh, but there are certain pants with you know, extra big, uh, you know, uh, seams right. that this thing has a hard time on. So that's why I think inside might be better. Uh, it can be, yeah, for that. Really like what Best Tech has been doing. Well, Any yeah, I, I do too. <laughs> oh, oh, except for that one. God. Except for that one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Todd Knife and Tool Showdown. I love yes. that. <laughs> that is, I love that knife without ever having to open that up for a quick second for me. So uh, I, I love the, um, so in the choil, first of all, I like, I like how you did explain how you, how you chose to do the, the plunge grind as it meets the choil. It's a little different than other knives. Okay. Well, that is a major point of contention, <laughs> actually. Uh my brother and I chose to do the plunge grinds like that on most of the knives because if you get something back here, you stick it in a box or anything, and you've ran the uh, bevels all the way back into the uh, finger well here, right. then you stick it in there and you get it stuck. And, and that's no fun. You stick it in some sort of soft, fleshy material and you get it stuck. That's bad. You're talking about you're talking about the uh, it gets stuck in the sharpening choil, the little right. Well, it gets stuck in the sharpening choil or forward finger choil or whatever. Right. If there's no stop there, got gotcha. you. Right. You put the stop on here, and most of those soft materials or your uh, Amazon box or whatever, you can stab it and not worry about it because it's going to stop right here, right. and then you just pull it right back. So that's the decision there, and that's. It's controversial. Some people love it. Some people hate it. You know, that's the way it goes. I love that that's controversial. I mean, to me, I uh, um, I didn't really exactly know until you explained it, but intuitively, I knew that that, that has a function that I agree with. Um, so the controversy is what? Uh, everyone wants us to put it all, or not everyone. You've got like, it's a 49-49 thing, and then 2% don't care. Uh mm -hmm. The, the 49 that want us to run it into the choil, it's all about aesthetics. Okay. And as we've talked about before, function before aesthetics. Right. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Jim, <laughs> roll that last one back up. I think, uh, Bob, that can get caught up on the scene for real. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It's my cool pants cool meaning k-u-h-l they're like you know pants you get at rei for mountain climbing because well, i'm I, always I actually up there knew, climbing the mountains what's that i actually knew exactly what you meant yeah okay. when you said that <laughs> cool yeah they it just hangs up i don't know why it seems like they shouldn't uh in in minnesota i can carry anything but switchblade and length is not a problem either that's nice in in a way like if they give you some concession all right we're not going to let you carry a spring actuated button knife. However, you can carry a six inch, you know, Bowie. Fine. Or any of your cold steel knives. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> or any of my cold steel knives. Okay, fine. It, not the best, but at least you're throwing me a bone where I come from. It's like, mm, you know, I went to uh, home Depot and bought some rope. This was a couple of years ago. And uh, I, I wanted a, a, a length of sisal rope. And the guy who was helping me, this poor dude, was trying to cut it with a with a um, box cutter that was dull. I mean, it was an old box cutter. He's like, and I'm like, yeah. I, I got this. And I, I pulled out my knife. I remember it was an Emerson Horseman, and I just <laughs> flew right through it. And he was like, dude, that's cool. I'm like, well, you should carry one of these. I mean, God damn it. You, you work in Home Depot. He's like, we're not allowed to carry knives at Home Depot. Uh, unfortunately he's right. I happen to know a little more about that than I should too. But, uh, yeah, there was a, an executive in home Depot that after one of the, the knife thing in some other country, I think it was, 
threw a fit about knives and now they have a no knives in Home Depot. No, but you can go and pick up a hatchet and split someone's skull open or you can go, you know, that's so uh, ridiculous. Pitchfork. Absolutely. And I know for I know that all those things were brought up, but sometimes <laughs> it's optics. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just don't win whenever you're trying to fight that fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Um, so the uh, hey, it's Skywarp. Skywarp. How you doing? What's up? I What's just got to say this. I got to say that Zelrig, you're a good knife reviewer and a great knife maker. Well, I've thank been you. wanting one of your knives for a long time, but they're hard to find. I know. It's you guys <laughs> buy them all. And <laughs> oh, man. Nice work if you can get it. <laughs> and uh, uh, White Mountain Knives, talk to those guys. They are probably, they, I know for a fact that they buy more of our knives than any of the other dealers. Okay. So I'll, wait, I'll, I'll wait, check them out. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <clears throat> They've been just like blowing up. I see a lot of people um, like Slicey Dicey and, and others are always referring to White Mountain Knives. Check out, you know, and I haven't gotten anything from them yet, but I'm going to because I keep hearing about them. Yeah, it's a rather small shop, but they keep, they watch the videos. They keep in the know. They keep up on things way better than I do. And uh, they know what's coming and they order, try to order appropriately. I mean, I've been, when, sorry to interrupt, but I mean, Go ahead. I'm just, I'm a huge fan of your knives. I mean, I, I follow your Instagram, I follow your YouTube, and every time when I see them, I'm like, man, I, I want to be a knife maker so bad. Uh, learn CAD, my man. That's what I want to do. I want to learn CAD and learn to make, you know, like this, like this kind of big one. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, sure. That's a uh, chunk. That is a uh, quartermaster Hamilton Hamilton, whatever it is. Yeah. How do you like but, that? How's the quartermaster? Uh, I'm sorry, Zell. I just I'm go ahead. Quartermaster. No, what do you I'm think? sorry to intrude. I'm feel like I'm intruding with y'all. You're not intruding, sir. No. And, and anyway, uh, actually, before you get to the quartermaster, I want to tell you, you're young and life is long, and you've got time, man. Start start filling up those notebooks now. I'm sure you're doing oh, it already. I got like probably just, four notebooks filled just, with fixed blades that I'm not I have not made yet. Yeah, keep keep drawing them, man, and uh, keep reaching out to people, and you never know what opportunity might come your way. Yeah. But if you're prepared with mm -hmm. all these drawings and all these ideas, when that opportunity comes, you'll be ready. Right, yeah. and go download Fusion 360 and start. Put the pillow on the wall. Tape it up there on the wall. Is that for banging your head? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but like this is probably the only thing like I got right, this from man. a knife kit. Hang on one second. Knife dude, thanks for joining us. Enjoy your beautiful wife. And yeah, have, uh, you have an awesome night too, man. Take care. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Right, Sky learn learn fusion <laughs> while you can, and that will make everything so much easier as you move forward. So uh fusion actually um Knowing something like that, that uh, software kind of goes across different platforms. Is that right? Or I should say, you can generate files from that 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 are uh, that go across platforms, right? Like right. Okay. Right. Yeah, you can do stuff in Fusion, SolidWorks, whatever, and you have kind of this. It's called a step file, which is kind of a common file type for all those systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, as we begin to wrap up, I'm going to ask Skywarp to to tell uh, we're going to do a knife fight now. And Zell and I are, are going to have a little debate about locks, axis lock versus the triad lock. And Skywarp, uh, since you've joined us, it's up to you to decide who defends what. OK. Yeah. So please tell us what should Zell defend, the axis lock or the triad lock? I think maybe the axis lock because it's more sturdy. It's more <laughs> okay. It oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right. All right. So don't don't do his argument for him. <laughs> but you're gonna. Uh, tell he us. was doing great, man. <laughs> I work, you're, you're gonna tell us who wins this one, okay? So you're gonna judge. <laughs> all me. right. All right, Zell. You're on the axis lock. Let's hear it. All right. So the axis lock is an easy to use lock mechanism that's plenty secure, especially whenever somebody besides Benchmaid makes it. And the, the best part about it is secure, easy to use, and it's fun. 
That other lock system that we're going to talk about is secure, it's not easy to use, and it isn't any fun. So there you go. Oh, all right. Well, I will start by saying fun is objective. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, so the triad lock is superior because primarily because of its strength. We all know, we've all seen uh, the proof, if you will, cold steel proof, that it is the strongest folding uh, knife lock on the market. Um, it is ambidextrous, 100%. Um, well, I also have to give that to the axis lock. Uh, but it is also built on a platform that is the longest lived or lived, as some people prefer to say, locking platform there is the back lock it is the it has the longest track record and uh an improvement on that can only reign superior <clears throat> i rest my case <laughs> oh boy i i was not in high school debate club hey where'd Sk where'd skywarp go he's supposed to tell us who oh there he thing. is well <laughs> i have one last oh, little okay. thing to say here Rebuttal. uh and, and you're going to make me forget it, but no, here we go. The What we talked about earlier, the locking system is not about strength. It's about being a safety mechanism to protect your hand. The triad lock attempts to make a folding knife into a fixed blade, which it isn't. But what if you're high-speed, low-drag, such as myself here living in suburban Virginia? Well, then you need to talk to Mr. Nick Shabazz. What if I need to do pull-ups off of my folding knife? I mean, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. And 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 clearly, oh, Bob, you lose. Oh, man. Gosh. Dang. You put a that, fine point on but it. But he's before. not. Skywarp is the judge this time. <laughs> That's Big right. Boar doesn't get it. Well, I'm going to say that the triway, not triway, I meant the, this, the lock, the lock, this lock works. It, it, it wins. All right. Well, the lock wins, but I think maybe Zell won the debate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he, had, he had some better points. <laughs> anyway, yeah, guys. Bob, any, you you yeah. got to get better at this, my man. I, well, you know what? I, I do. I do. I You know what? I should just choose the side I want to choose. The, the axis lock is being copied all over the place for a reason. And yes. cannot uh, discount the fidget factor. We've we've Absolutely. come to learn that, that is a part of knife ownership. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, as much as that makes Greg Medford bristle, I don't know if you heard my interview with him, but when I mentioned fidget factor, he was like, "No man, fidgets." And, you know, he was like, <laughs> "Fidget." And I'm like, oh, "All right, sorry, sir." <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, episode forty six of the Knife Junkie Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. All right, All right Zell, any last words? I don't mean last mm. word. It sounds so dark. I mean, like, any last thoughts this night? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think so. We've had a good conversation. The only thing I would leave people with is all these lock mechanisms. Get out there and try them if you have the opportunity so that we can find out what's going to stick against the wall because some of it's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know never resist well i shouldn't say that but but getting something innovative and new is it is a great thing for your collection it's a great thing to teach you kind of what is important to you as a collector and what isn't you know i've gotten a lot of crazy knives and kind of you know liked them but kind of gotten rid of them because they just weren't a good fit for me so okay i do have one more question for you please you you mentioned earlier today that that uh, Strider had changed the way you were thinking about collecting. You really didn't clarify that. What, yeah. what exactly were you going for? Well, uh, okay. Um, what? So this this Strider has kind of reinforced in me um, what I really think is valuable. In, in that uh, I go for I, I I've spent a lot of money on buying knives that I don't carry and use because I'm immediately taken in by how they look and how they seem to work through YouTube videos. And, uh, and since I don't have a store around me, I can go and play with it for, for five minutes and be like, okay, this is cool, but maybe not for me or, or this is cool, but I've had enough. I end up buying it and then I have it. And then it's hard to get rid of because it is cool. This, this Kaiser compadre is a cool damn knife. Do yeah. I ever carry it? No, I never carry it. So 
But this, I mean, I I can't get this out of my pocket. My Emersons, I'm the same way. My stri uh, my um, hinderers, I'm the same way. So I'm starting to feel Microtex. I'm starting to feel like I should just, you know, have a, a limited so, uh, a limited area for new things that I want to try and have and maybe move along, but keep keep a smaller stable of the classics and just stick with that instead of having a bunch of knives I don't carry. I, I think I hear you. I think what I'm hearing though is maybe if you're going to buy a knife, maybe you need to have a use case for it unless you know that it's just going to be uh, for fun. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's kind of what I come down to whenever you talk about collection, because I've got some Microtex, a couple of hinderers, my own designs, and that's kind of, and Leong Ma designs. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that I carry and use. And that's what I want in my collection. I don't need a big collection of stuff to show off. Yeah. Even if it's just showing it off to yourself and appreciate pulling it open and like, yeah, you can, you can, you can go back on blade HQ and, and look at that knife or go on YouTube. I mean, even right. better and just watch someone play with it. And it, it's, it's kind of pornographic, but just sort of get, get the thrill that way. And then, right. and then you're done. And Matthew and Lee has went above and beyond. He went and watched us camping with his family in his car, probably on his in-car Wi-Fi, which is cool, by the way. First of all, Matthew, thank you. And second of all, please thank your wife, for God's sake, because uh, it, it might be ugly when you get back to the tent. You were doing what? Anyway, man, thank you so much for joining us. Stu, welcome, sir. It's great to see you. I just sent Stu back his ZT0223. He loaned it to me, mm. and uh, I was shocked at how much I loved it. Um, when it first came out, I did not like the aesthetics uh, on paper, but then when I had it in hand, it, it is a great knife. It's cool. kind of it's kind of got a fat blade, but it's super sharp and slicey. Not sure how they did that. That goofy-looking handle on paper is actually very attractive in real life and feels great. So anyway, with you, uh, are all users. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. That's what I have to do. So this, which gets no pocket time, but is a beautiful, awesome, enviable, sweet, big ass knife. Fun I got knife. Fun. Yes. Fun knife. I, I have to reduce my fun knife collection. That's what it is. <laughs> Thank all you, right. Sir. All right. Well, that about does it for this edition of Thursday Night Knives. I want to thank Terrell Todd, a.k.a. Zelf, Zelric42, for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Not only are you uh, super knowledgeable about knives, but your experience in designing and, and collaborating with these big companies to make your knives is very valuable. Thanks for joining us. And thanks, all of you, uh, Skywarp also, for joining us. And if Thank you, sir. And if you haven't yet, please like, comment, subscribe, and share the link for this video with friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, etc. And uh, just remember that those little actions really do help. They help proliferate the knife message, and that's what we want to do. And uh, so for myself and Terrell Todd and Jim behind the switcher working his magic, I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying good night and don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>